Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about construction budgets and how to make sure you're insulated from construction price increases during the early phases of a project. When you're investing in new construction, you need to lock in expectations. You're setting expectations with your lender, who's going to take a few months to underwrite the project and approve the loan. You're setting expectations with investors, and you're setting expectations on the total equity investment and the rate of return. Then along comes a year like 2020 or 2021, and construction prices are volatile. How do you set realistic expectations with your lender on the total investment? How do you set expectations with your investors when the ground is shifting beneath your feet? This raises the question about whether we're in an inflationary environment or not. Are the price fluctuations an artifact of short-term supply constraints, or are these price increases something we're going to be stuck with for the long term? It's clear that lumber prices have swung wildly over the past 12 months. In March of 2020, lumber was priced at $264 per thousand board feet. By September, the price was $985 per thousand board feet. By the second half of September, it had dropped in the 600s. By November, it had fallen to about half of the peak. Today, we're back close to $1,000 per thousand board feet. So are these prices here to stay? Over the past 20 years, prices have fluctuated up and down. Energy prices right now are up compared with this time last year. Oil is up to about $67 a barrel, more than double the price it was this time last year. We even had a short-term supply glut when prices ran negative as some futures contracts expired with a shortage of midstream storage capacity. Inflation, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, is an average over a basket of goods. If prices for materials go up, will rents go up correspondingly? Will salaries go up correspondingly or not? Which of these metrics will be negatively impacted? Modeling the future of a project that's a year away from construction becomes an exercise in crystal ball gazing. How do you buffer your project for a potential price increase? How do you assume whether rents will go up or not? In an inflationary environment, we know that over the long term, the benefit goes to the equity holder. We know that rents and salaries and groceries and fuel, they will all go up in price. But it won't be a nice, orderly straight line. The path is likely to be filled with chaos and inefficiency. Some property owners will be well positioned to benefit and others will be backed into a corner and experience a cash crunch. So the question becomes, how do you plan your projects to be resilient in the face of inflation and the beneficiary in the event of longer term inflation? We spent a lot of hours modeling these scenarios in our own business in recent months as we put together various pro forma estimates for our projects. The hard construction cost makes up anywhere between half to three quarters of a total project cost, depending on the cost of the land and various other impact fees. Let's say that you want to buffer your project against a 10% increase in construction cost. There's two questions you need to answer. Let's look at an example. If your land is expensive, and let's say construction makes up half of your project cost, then a 10% increase in construction will result in a 5% increase in the overall cost of the project. That's because land makes up the other half. So the question is, what would be the impact on the internal rate of return on a 5% increase in the total cost of the project? Is it still a viable project? Are your profit margins still in the acceptable range? Will your debt coverage ratio still meet the metrics with a 5% increase in cost? But the second question, this is much more important, What happens to the cash position within the project if you're faced with a 10% increase in hard construction, or in this case, a 5% increase in the overall project cost? Do you get backed into a corner and risk running out of cash during construction? It's that second scenario, running out of cash, that's the most dangerous to a project. You have to make sure you don't run out of cash. That means using your leverage responsibly. It means increasing your loan reserves to make sure you protect the project. It means bringing 5% more equity to the table. If you bring 5% more equity to the table, then you could theoretically borrow 5% more than you strictly need to. That doesn't mean you have to increase the cost of the project by 5% in your pro forma. It just means that you're able to if you need to. You still have your original plan based on a prudent forecast of construction costs, but if you had to go back and ask the bank for additional funds, you have the necessary equity already raised as part of your capital raise to handle the larger loan request problem is that no contractor will be willing to commit for longer than about 30 days. But your loan underwriting process and your entitlement process is far more than 30 days. And you have a risk that by the time you freeze your loan request to the bank, you freeze your offering memorandum to your investors, the prices increase out of your control. 
you need to have enough margin in your project that you can handle that increase if it happens. Another way to protect against the price increase is simply to buffer your construction costs with your lender and with investors. If your general contractor quotes you a price of, say, $120 a square foot, then you put $130 in your budget, irrespective of your soft quote. Well, let's say that your construction costs are a million higher than you projected. You might have to bring, say, an additional $200,000 or $250,000 in equity in order to afford that higher loan amount. In an inflationary environment, the road can be bumpy. It will likely work out in the end, and leverage will multiply your returns. But you need to design in enough buffer to protect yourself from the downside risk. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.